And the human spirit remains forever the, to the extent of eternity. Okay, so the ruh, the ruh, your spirit, which is what gives you life, this never dies. This is our belief. Your spirit will never die. The spirit of the disbeliever will never die. All human beings are created to live for eternity. We all have beginnings. We are created from nothing. And our beginnings are a long time before this world. But we don't have ends. And that's possible because of the fact that he who has no beginning and therefore also has no end. He can create you at any time he wills, and he can sustain you in existence as long as he wills. So we don't have self-sufficient eternity. <clears throat> we have contingent eternity. But God willed when he created you, because you're very special, that you will never die, and you will see the effect of your actions. And we will either inherit the garden, may we all inherit the garden together, and may none of us lag behind. And if we don't inherit that, you inherit the fire. That's the way it is. There's great wisdom in that. We have to understand it. We have to accept it. And the human spirit goes through five lives. What is the first one? Do you know? What is the first life? Sorry? No. Uh, we say, alastu bi rabbikum, but that's the end of the first life. Okay? The first life is the time of the spirit alone. And we were in bodies too, but they were tiny little bodies. And we were like little pieces of light. And we went around the throne of Allah for eons and eons, for eons and eons. And this is where your identity is rooted. Your identity is rooted in that world. We all knew Allah, every one of us. And then towards the end of that time, Allah puts us in the loins of our father Adam, and he brings Adam to Arafat, where we make pilgrimage, and he took all of the children of Adam out of his loins, who are billions and billions of children. And then he said to them, he manifested himself to them, Alestu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? Okay, so this is very meaningful because we all knew that he was our God. He didn't say, Alestu bi ilahikum. We all knew he's his God, that he is our God. God is the one who makes things as they ought to be. He makes the cat a cat, the dog a dog. He makes the healthy person healthy and the sick person sick. God makes things the way they are meant to be. But the Rabb, the Lord, who is also God, he is the one who commands and must be obeyed. And he is the one who prohibits and must be obeyed. And he is the one who develops, yurabbi, guides. And he is the one who rewards and punishes. So that means that something new is about to happen. Alastu bi rabbikum. Something new is about to happen because this is not about tawaf around the throne of God for eons. This is about something new. And it's Adamic because there's our father Adam. It's about the creation of Adam. It's about life in this world. Then after that, we come into this world, and we come into this world through the wombs of our blessed mothers. Okay, so this, if the next world is the world of the tomb, this is the world of the womb. We come into this world through the womb of our mothers. And here we are for a very short time, because it's a very hard test. And most people can't take it for long. And some people are here for just a day. Some people are here just for a few years. Okay? And death is a big thing. Death is a big thing, right? It's a shocking thing. And uh, I remember when death first came into my life, which was 1955. 
That's a time that you probably can't even imagine. The world was very different. And uh, the first thing, my great-grandfather died. My great-grandfather was a powerful man. And he's one of those people that um, you don't know where they'll be in the next world. And uh, when he died, uh, he was buried like Franklin Roosevelt. He had the same casket and everything, and it was a cold winter. We was in Kansas. He was in western Kansas. We were in Nebraska. We had to drive south to Kansas for the funeral. Uh, the state of Kansas cleared. There was a blizzard. They cleared the roads for his funeral. And uh, when I went there, it was like so cold. And then I could see that everyone is frightened. My mother, my father, my aunts. And you could look at him, he's in his casket, you know, stiff. And uh, it's like I could see, it really frightened me, to tell you the truth, because I was a little boy. And it's like I could see that nobody is happy here. No one is content here. No one wants to face this. And of course, they've got all kinds of concerns. Death not being the only one. It's also because families, when people like that die, they start to fight. You know, and they start to break up. So they're also worried about that. But as a child, I couldn't see that. But as a child, I could see that this is a horrible moment. And it's probably because, I mean, I don't know where he went, but the fire is probably not far away, you know. And, um, and then in the springtime, I had a little friend named Rodney who was like my best friend. He was like three years younger than I was, and he died. He was a little boy, you know, and he had cancer. We knew he had cancer. We knew he'd die, and, you know, my mother would take me to his house, and, you know, we, children talk about what, what are you going to be when you grow up, right? And then he's going to say, well, when I grow up, and then it's like, you have to be really polite, but, like, you're not going to grow up. You'll be lucky to make it through the summer. And he didn't make it through the summer. And then uh, his father went insane. His father, who was my father's partner, he went insane. He became an alcoholic, and he was good for nothing after that. Death is a huge thing. And one of the things I could see is that as Christians, we fear death. And that's the truth. That's why like, I came into Islam through the autobiography of Malcolm X, and I have to say, I fear death. I did fear death, and I also feared existence, because I didn't feel that I was right with it. And when I was reading the autobiography of, Mal autobiography of Malcolm X, he said, Islam is a religion that removes fear. And that hooked me. I read the book all night, but that's what hooked me, because it's like, is that possible? Is it possible for me to live without fear, without fear of death? You know, it's, and it's like, why do you fear death? It's because, you know, you know there's more to it than just dying, right? And you know you've got to get this right. So, you know, that, that's a big thing. The spirit remains forever to the extent of eternity. And when we die in this world, we go into the next world, which is the barzakh. And the barzakh is the intermediary world, the interface. And there, most people are there for a long time. We're here for a short time. Even if you lived a thousand years, that's a short time. In the barzakh, you'll be there for a long time. And the barzakh is very real. It is more real than this world. And the barzakh is under the ground. It is on top of the ground. It is in the sky. And there, people are rewarded and punished. And people have different realities there. And then in the barzakh, you usually forget what happened in this world, by the way. Not all people do, but usually you do. And then we are born into the world again with the resurrection. Where does the resurrection begin of your body? Uh, maybe some of us, our bodies will be intact because we hope we'll be saints. But uh, if the body is not intact, where does the recreation of the body begin? Sorry? The coccyx, the us, 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 which is the very bottom of the spinal column. And where is the coccyx located? Of course, it's in the pelvis, but what's the name of that bone that it is part of? The sacrum. The sacrum. What is sacrum? S-A-C-R-U-M. Sacrum. It's a sacrum's like a little... 
a five, it's like a little, what do we call it? Pentagon, is that what we call it? You know, what, what do you call a five? Huh? Pentagon. pentagon, because in the United States we have a pentagon. I didn't know if I could use that word, <laughs> right? But, uh, you know, that's the sacrum looks like that. Sacrum's a very important part of your body, very important. What does the word sacrum mean? Sacred bone, sacred bone. And it's Latin translating the Greek for sacred bone. That's very interesting. In, in the European tradition, we call the sacrum, where the coccyx is, the sacred bone. I don't know why they did that. I mean, it would be something interesting to look into, wouldn't it? But it's the sacred bone, and that's where, you know, you are. You, you are in that bone in a very special way. And you were recreated from the sacrum, from the coccyx and the sacrum. And then we come back into this world for the fourth life. The fourth life is the judgment. We're going to talk about that, inshallah, the judgment. You know, and the judgment is the most difficult thing of all. Even though, inshallah, you and I will be ready. One of the great saints of Islam has a whole chapter about the judgment. He's a Sheikh al-Akbar. This is his land, right? He was born not far from here. You read that? Well, I read that chapter. I was terrified because he writes about the judgment as if you were there. And it's like, wow, I can't take this. No, you can't. You know, the judgment, the whole earth is flattened. No mountains, no valleys, no trees, no pyramids, no telephone poles, nothing. It's all flattened. All of the islands, all of the continents, all of the subcontinents are all brought together into one huge world. The mountains are flattened. The Himalayans, the Rockies, the, A the Andes, they're all flattened. And the earth is flat, no trees, nothing. And all the waters of the earth are made one ocean, and it's on fire. Right? And then the people are brought forth. And of course, the believers are brought forth in beautiful form. But they're also in great fear because that is the day of the wrath of God. His wrath is over everything. And it's like, I have to be judged, and where will I go? And what will come out? And look, look at the failures, just like Sheikh Baka'i. Because he's a person who lived that reality that like, you know, I've never fulfilled your right. I can't fulfill your right. Right? And all the believers will be gathered together under the banner of praise, which is a huge green banner that goes to the east and the west and the south. It's, it's three banners. You can see it from a thousand miles away or more. It's huge, and that's where the Prophet will be, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's where the companions will be, and that's where the successors will be, that's where the saints will be, and that's where the other prophets will be, and their communities. It's a beautiful story. And then you have the disbelievers and the hypocrites and so forth. And this is the most difficult time of all, and this is where al-shafa'atul kubra comes in, the great intercession.